Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with cool guys. Wait for it. Watch this. Yeah. That's what every CJ7, 5, and 8 owner wants to see. Original fuel gauge working. On this festive episode of Jeep with Cool Guys, you can tell by my outstanding sweater, we're going to talk about the original fuel gauge and the temp gauge in the CJ7, 8, later versions of the CJ5 speedometer. So we're going to go through and we're going to check out the ohm resistance on both the fuel gauge and the temp gauge and also we're going to run a current through them to see if they actually move. And what that's going to do is it's going to help determine whether it's the gauge itself, the ground that leads to it, or potentially the sending unit. On my current 79 CJ7, I have traced it all the way back to the, f the sending unit not being good. Now, I've seen a lot of reviews on the, the Crown and the Omics Ada's sending units being dead on arrival. I can't vouch for that, but I do know that I put a Crown sending unit in mine, and it it doesn't work. Now I have to drop out the, the gas tank, pull the sending unit, and test it just to make sure, but I've already gone ahead and ordered one from a different company. I'll put a dis link in the description to the one that I ordered, and hopefully that will work for you, if it is your sending unit problem. So to do this, with the speedometer out of the vehicle, you're going to need three things. A set of test clips, positive, negative, a battery, 12 volt battery and a voltmeter that has uh, ohm resistance, direct current, and continuity on this. If your speedometer is still in your vehicle and you're trying to figure out what the problem is there, we'll also go through that later on in this episode. Before we get started testing, make sure that your posts, all five of these, are fairly clean. I'm going to take a wire brush and get rid of the corrosion, a uh, little bit of surface rusting, because the last thing you want to do is have something that is inhibiting an accurate reading when you start using your voltmeter or when we test these things out with the battery. Now that we've got the post all cleaned up, I went and marked the three posts on the fuel gauge as to which ones they are. On this brown cardboard backer, there should be an imprint of each one of the letters. So this one is the I post, which means ignition. This is the hot wire. This is the S post, which goes out to the sending unit. In your wiring harness, this is a pink wire. This is a red wire. The A is the jumper piece that goes over and powers the temperature gauge. This bimetal jumper, it's not even like a, it's not a wire, it's more like a plate that connects the temperature gauge to the fuel gauge, what it actually does is it converts the 12 volt feed coming in through the I post to 5 volts. Otherwise you would toast your temperature gauge if this was taking on a full 12 volts. For your temperature gauge, this would essentially be your power wire. And this is the post, this would be your S post that goes out to the temperature sending unit on the back of your engine. So for now, let's test out the resistance on all of these to make sure that they check out. So get yourself a voltmeter, put it to the ohms reading, and the lowest one that it has, this one has 200. And then it really doesn't make a difference whether, you, whether you're using the black or the red and what you connect it to. We'll start with the S to ground. So one on the S and grounding meaning anywhere in the speedometer housing. This should be between 68 and 72 ohms. I already know that this voltmeter is about uh, one ohm off, so this registers perfectly. S to I post should be between 19 and 21 ohms. There again, right on. From S to A, this should be 21 ohms. There again, right on. I to A, this should be zero. There should be no resistance here whatsoever. Perfect. I to ground should be between 49 and 51 ohms. 
right on there again and then A to ground should be between 49 and 51 ohms. Perfect. So I know that as far as the resistance and everything that's going through this fuel gauge, it's right within spec. If you find that any of your readings are not within those thresholds, it's more than likely that the, there is something wrong with your fuel gauge. Moving on to test the temp gauge, this is real simple. It's one test from A to S. It should be 19 to 21 ohms. Perfect. One last thing to test for the fuel gauge before we move on is to make sure that the grounding strap, which is behind this cardboard piece, but also on the back side of the speedometer gauge, is grounded into the housing of the speedometer itself. So just test it by setting your voltmeter to continuity, putting one connector on the eye post and the other somewhere on the middle. You get the chime, then you know that this is grounded through the speedometer housing, and then ultimately you need to make sure that your speedometer housing is grounded into your dash, into the body, into the negative post on the battery. Now, I'm gonna tell you to do this at your own risk, because you risk blowing out your fuel gauge or your temp gauge if you don't do this correctly or do it for too long. It's a real easy way to test if your fuel gauge or your temp gauge are still good as far as receiving power. The first step is to get two alligator clip test leads. Take the positive and connect it to the eye post. Take the black one and connect it to the sending unit piece. Now you want to take a car battery, hopefully you have one lying around, or you could do this inside of the engine bay with the battery that you have already for your CJ. And you're going to want to connect the black to the negative post on the battery and the red to the positive post on the battery. But you're only going to want to do this for maybe a half second. Second at best. Because to be honest with you, to burn up this fuel gauge takes about two seconds. Flip over the fuel gauge so that we can see what's going on. What we're looking for is the indicator arm on the fuel gauge to move. This will go quick up to full. So this is a good indication of whether it's able to take power. So I'm going to hook it up to the negative and then I'm just going to touch the positive. Let's watch. There you go. We know that the fuel gauge can take power and it went all the way up there. So yay, super cool, super exciting. Now let's test out the temp gauge. So take your negative, connect it to the sending post. Take the positive, connect it to the eye post, flip over the speedometer, hook up the negative, and just touch it to the positive. All we want to do is see it move. Bingo. Sweet! Once you disconnect them, these arms will go back to the lowest setting. So, as you can see, it's slowly moving back. The other thing I want to point out is you can do this with the speedometer in the Jeep inside of the dash. You're just going to need really long test leads. Uh, you can run it to the battery, but you're, you're going to have to get up underneath behind that dash and know exactly which post is which post that you're operating. But I think you get the idea. This is a great way to test this stuff out. Let's go out into the garage and test a speedometer fuel gauge, temp gauge that's in my CJ7 and the grounds leading back to as close to the uh, fuel sending unit as we can get with the body still on. Before we head out into the garage, I've got one last test that I want to talk about. The jumper strap between the fuel gauge and the temp gauge. What this does, like I previously mentioned, is takes the 12 volts that flow through the, or through the fuel gauge and converts it to 5 volts for the temperature gauge. You'll want to take off the nuts on both of these gauges 
that connect the strap between the two. And make sure that you've got a good clean connection between this post, the, the nut, and this strip. Because if you're not getting the proper voltage, or you're getting too much voltage, you'll fry this thing. So this test is probably going to be best done with the speedometer inside of the dash in your CJ7. What you'll do is you'll put the key in, turn it to the on state, and then you're going to get your voltmeter out. You'll put it onto direct current, probably the 20 set, and then you're going to want to connect one lead to the A post, and then the other lead to the other post at the end of the strap. You may get it jumping around between 7 and 5, below 5. You don't want it to stay at a, t a constant 12. If it's at a constant 12, then you've probably already toasted this, and your temp gauge is bad, and this connector piece is bad. So just test those things out, just to make sure that you've got good readings between both of these gauges. All right, now that we've bench tested the speedometer gauges, we're going to move out into the garage here, obviously. And I updated my sweater because that was like two weeks ago, so sorry. Anyways, you need two things for this test. And what we're going we're go we're gonna to do is we're going to test whether you're getting voltage to your gauges um, through the wiring harness and then we're going to test out those different points going back to the fuel gauge and then we'll also get into the engine compartment and test out the temp sensor that's in the very back of the inline six. Remember this is for a 258. It would work for a 304, 360, 401 V8. I just don't know where the temperature sensors are on those engine blocks. But anyways, what you're going to need is a test light. Um, I actually had no idea how to use these things, but they're really simple. It comes with a ground that you clip onto whatever grounding element inside of your vehicle that you want. And then all you have to do is just touch the metal tip to the connector that should be receiving voltage and it lights up. So let's go ahead and start with the fuel gauge and show you how that's going to work. Okay, so I apologize if the lighting isn't all that great in here, but I am in my garage. So I'm doing this from the passenger side. All you're going to want to do is just take the, the copper clip of your test light and clip it onto any bolt that is screwed into the body that you've already tested with your voltmeter to make sure that it's actually grounded into the battery. All right, so I connected my test lead to the bolt that's coming through the body uh, right behind the parking brake because I already know that that's grounded. You want to take your key, put it into the ignition, turn it to the ACC, which basically starts running uh, power through the wiring harness. Uh, you'll know that that's actually active because your voltmeter will show a charge. And then you just want to take the test end and slide it up into behind, and this is not easy to do, and try and find that post for the fuel gauge. This would be the eye post, so we're testing out the eye post first. What you want to see is a constant light. That means that you have power coming through and going to your fuel gauge. So that's a good sign. And then slide it over to, I think it's the A post, it's the one that uh, has that bridge wire to the temp gauge, and that should flash. The reason it's flashing is because it's converting the power down to five volts. So two out of three, good. Now you want to try and find the post for the sending unit, and that should do the same thing. See how it's flashing fairly quickly? That's a good sign, about one every half second. So as of right now, we know that our fuel gauge is getting power. That's really a good sign. But before we move on, I uh, want to give you a little bit more detail on this. When you connect this to the A terminal, which is the voltage supply to the temp gauge, that should like we had shown before, flash almost at the exact same brightness. It should be about a second apart. So you see how it's like, I mean, it kind of fluctuates, but it's basically about a second between each flash. If it stays constantly bright and doesn't flash, 
then that means that you have a problem within your regulator inside of your gauge. And that's more of an indicator of it could possibly be a bad ground to the gauge or regulator arm inside of your gauge might actually be stuck. And then you'd have to take the gauge apart and kind of see if anything's moving in there. That's a lot more complicated. Maybe another time. If it doesn't light up at all, then your gauge is bad. So that's a good way of knowing that you can stop here because your gauge is toast. So hopefully that doesn't happen to you. Now, if we go to the, the sending unit um, post and get that connected, it should flash, but be significantly dimmer. The more full that the, um, the tank is, the dimmer the light gets. If it's fully bright, as bright as the A post, then that means that you probably have a, a problem with your sending unit. So as for right now, it's flashing, but it's really quick, but it's dim. So my guess is, is that you can see how it just kind of alternates there. My guess is that the sending unit is bad in this CJ. So we'll see, just keep testing. Okay, so now we're gonna test out the engine block temperature sensor. Again, just take your lead. I connected it to the negative post on the battery, and then you wanna slide your uh, connector wire up a little bit, just making sure it still has contact, and then you just wanna make contact with the post, and that's what you wanna see. As long as you are getting a light and it's flashing, then that means that you're good. So now that you've tested out the power that's going to your temp sensor, you can get out your voltmeter and you can test out the ohm resistance. This engine right now is completely cold and for the most part these sensors really don't start operating until it gets to be about 100 degrees. So if you really want to test this thing out, you're probably going to want to run your engine, let it warm up a little bit to get a better ohm reading. But once you do that, get out your voltmeter, put the negative lead on a grounded part somewhere in the engine or to the battery, and then you want to take your positive lead and put that on the post of the sensor, and then put it on the lowest ohm reading on your voltmeter. If it's cold, which is about 130 degrees, the ohm reading should be about 73. As it heats up, and you get in where the arm or the needle starts moving at the very beginning of the band it's going to be about and i think that's about what 170 degrees give or take that should be about 36 ohms at the top of the band right before your engine is getting ready to overheat which is about 240 degrees you're looking at somewhere around 13 ohms and then last, if your engine is overheating and you're blowing radiator fluid all over the place that's 270, that's not good, and you're looking at about nine ohms. So hopefully you're not in that space, but I just want to give you the ohm readings coming from the voltmeter so that you can test this out on your own. Last thing to check before having to drop the fuel tank to pull the sending unit is the rear wire harness that comes back uh, along the driver's side comes down through the body tub and then goes across the back cross member of your CJ, you want to look for this pink wire. And this is your sending unit wire. So you want to disconnect this. And then again with your key in the ignition turned to on, you want to take your test light, connect the lead to a bolt on the chassis somewhere. I've got it connected to the body. Then you want to take the test end of your test light, connect it into the pink wire, and then you're looking for that flashing light. As far as the dimness or the brightness of it, I believe the brighter it is, the more full the tank is. But since my gauge is reading at empty, uh, I don't think that this is obviously correct. So at least I know I have power coming back to the fuel sending unit. So that just leads me to think that the fuel sending unit that I put into this tank is the wrong one or it's dead on arrival. All right, folks, there you have it. Another amazing episode of Jim with Cool Guy. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a little while because it's been kind of a bane to my existence. It's the whole fuel gauge, temp gauge, 
And I see so many things out there on the forums, people at, uh, on Facebook asking questions about this stuff. Um, there are some aftermarket fuel and temperature gauges for the CJs, made by Crown or Omics. I don't have necessarily a high opinion of them. I, I've heard that they're either wired backwards. Finding a operable OEM fuel gauge or a temp gauge is kind of a unicorn. I, for the ones that are out there that are watching this video that have one, I'm, I'm happy for you. But for the ones that don't, this video serves a purpose of figuring out what the problem actually is. So hopefully it's your sending units or your temp unit or maybe somewhere in the wiring because finding those gauges not easy to do. One of the things I want to offer up to you guys is that if you email me, I will send you a wiring harness diagram for a 79, and that should cover this, the V8s and the inline sixes for that year. And it will give you a pretty solid understanding or at least a framework for all of the CJs. There's obviously some differences in the wiring harnesses for the later models, like the 82 through 86 once they started putting on the emissions components on these things. But for the most part, the basic wiring is the same. Hopefully this was educational. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, I know it was for me. And again, like and subscribe. Let's keep this movement going.